Hi, good day to you and welcome to my channel that I tutor you in science for free. The topic in this video will be light. And light is a pretty fun chapter as you get to use a lot of drawing instruments and draw lots of pictures as you're working. And light is part of the electromagnetic spectrum. We covered the basics of that in the previous video. You can click the video on the top right corner. Okay, so let's get into it. So light bounces off items and into our eyes. That's why we can see them. Only smooth surfaces like glass like mirrors are you able to see a reflection as for rough items like a table you will not be able to see your reflection so basically light is reflected off a smooth surface like that with the normal in the middle at 90 degrees light that comes in to the surface is called the incident ray and it exits as the reflected ray from this we can already describe to laws of reflection incident ray reflected ray normal or light on the same plane incident angle reflected angle will be the same so using the mirror to look at things out of your original sight will always be as far behind the mirror as the object is in front of the mirror so simply put it's just the distance between the item to the mirror you will see it as the same as the from the mirror to its image mirror images are virtual which means to say that these images that you see cannot be casted onto a a screen and they are of the same size they are laterally inverted and upright laterally means left right if you are raising your left hand the mirror will show you the right hand and upright means if your head is on top and your foot is below the mirror will show the same head is on top foot is below so drawing a ray diagram you do need to take note of certain things object to image should be of equal distance to the mirror and it must be perpendicular to the mirror as well draw the image straight into the eye and then bend it upwards into the object and that will be all that's pretty simple so applications of reflections are pretty straightforward you would have already encountered these things in life mirrors two-way mirrors dentistry things like that and the next one the com more complicated one will be refraction Refraction is the bending of light when it passes through mediums of different densities. So imagine if you are a lifeguard, you're on the beach, you want to reach the victim in the fastest possible time. So you will need to plan your route, how you would want to swim the least because you run faster on land than swimming in the water. Okay, and one of the key images to remember for refraction will be this, whereby light comes in from the air and enters the water or a glass and it bends inwards toward the normal and with this image you can use to solve a lot of problems with a little bit of reverse engineering and also with this image you can already state two laws over here incident ray refracted ray and normal they all lie on the same plane and the second law of refraction will be the formula of sine i over sine r will give you a constant sine i meaning the incident ray and sine r giving you the refracted ray will give you a certain number and that number is used to calculate like refractive indexes for the particular medium and talking about refractive index it also comes with this formula n equals to c over v speed of light in vacuum against the one in the medium and so the constant can be also used interchangeably with this because it's talking about the refractive index so n also equals to sine i over sine r and different medium have different densities therefore they bend light a little bit differently the refractive indexes is different for different medium so these are some general examples you don't have to commit them to memory they're just to there to tell you that they have different refractive indexes and using the earlier image that should be deeply etched into your mind for this chapter will be the refraction one it can also tell you about how it exits the medium from denser material to less dense material and due to law of reversibility you can just change the arrowheads and it will still work the same and due to the phenomenon of refraction there will be misperception of the depth of the water you will always think that it's a little bit more shallow and if you see an item in it it will always be a little bit behind the actual item and more shallow and with all of this bending of light there will be this very interesting part whereby light is totally internally reflected and none of the light escapes into the less dense medium especially when it comes straight from the denser medium so usually an example like that will be given light and it's coming in from the denser medium then some of it is bouncing away some of it escapes and it's bent and as you shift the light source increasing the angle of incidence you'll come a point whereby the light is traveling between the denser material as well as the less dense material and the refracted ray is off 90 degrees incident
hidden angle will be called the critical angle because right after this any larger angle other than the any angle larger than critical angle will give you your total internal reflection and because using the earlier formula sine i over sine r if one of the angles is already 90 degrees then the other angle will be your critical angle so n will be equals to 1 over sine c c for critical so critical angle is defined like that angle of incidence optically denser medium which angle of refraction in the less dense medium is 90 degrees total internal reflection is also defined as such complete reflection of light ray in an optically denser medium with an optically less dense medium so like from glass to air or water to air things like that so total internal reflection has applications of such okay now we'll be talking about converging lens which is lens that bends light all toward a single point like a magnifying glass and if you have ever used a magnifying glass before it, you know that it's fatter in the middle so glasses that are fatter in the middle are called convex are of convex in shape they bend like together if they are slimmer in the middle it's called a concave lens they diverge light rays away from each other and so with this topic there'll be a lot of drawing involved and also some little vocabulary so principal axis of course is just the line which passes through center of lens perpendicular of course optical center will be the middle point of the lens principal focus point point on principal axis where all rays parallel to principal axis will meet after passing through the lens focal plane is perpendicular to the principal axis so all parallel rays meet after passing through the lens so focal plane is just a congregation or a accumulation of all the possible outcomes of the different focal points Points. Focal length is just the distance between optical center and the focal point. And next we'll be drawing ray diagrams. This will be the fun part. So always remember draw the straight line one first from the object to through the center. That's number one. Then number two, you draw the horizontal one from the top to the lens and downwards via the focal point. And so I would like to bring your attention to these six scenarios, which is good to commit to uh, memory actually it's, it looks like it's a lot but it's just about patterns so we talk about the first one like coming from a far object so light will definitely be a bit more parallel in this case you draw the straight one then you draw the bent one this is what you'll get and any image that forms on the right side of the lens will be a real one because you can cast this onto a screen but because it's pointing downwards it's inverted it will be diminished because the size of the image is of course much smaller than the actual size of the distant item so this will be of course things like telescope so what happens if the item is more than two focal points away then same draw the straight one then the bent one and this is what you'll get same also inverted real diminish and the users will be for camera and your eyesight and the fun one will be this one case number three which is good to remember because 2f equals 2f the size you draw a straight one the bent one and you will realize that it will also give you the same size of image as the object so things like photocopy machine and what happens if the object is between 1f and 2f you get a larger one so as the item comes towards the lens the image is moving away from the lens noting that 2f equals 2f that's like case 3 so item between 1f and 2f straight one first bent one next and inverted real and magnified image the image is now bigger than the object itself so things like projector photograph and enlargers if an item is at point f then you will get a parallel line straight after the lens this will give you an upright image virtual magnified image virtual means the item cannot be cast so the users would be this and lastly the most common one will be when an item is between the lens and your focal point draw the straight one first then the bent one and you will realize that actually it is a bit diverging right so if you extrapolate it you draw it backwards you will get a large item behind the object so it is also upright virtual magnified image is behind the object and the common use of this would be magnifying glass so these six it's good to commit how to draw these to memory it's not too complicated actually so applications of converging lenses will be as such or helping for correcting eyesight for forming images in cameras and that's about it let's go to some practice questions okay this is quite simple light pass from air to glass so it's less dense to dense incident angle 30 refracted angle is 20 okay so from this you can already find the refractive index sine i over sine r then next with the angle of incidence is changed to 60 what's next right then you can input it back into the formula and this is the answer you should be getting 
36. A ray of light on one side of the rectangular block, the angle is 40. The, uh, the angle of refraction is 40. Critical angle is 44. So which diagram shows the path of this ray? So it will be this because if you use basic trigonometry, this will be 50 degrees because they should be adding up to 90. Triangle adds up to 1. Angles in triangle add up to 180. So it's bigger than your 44. Totally internally reflected. And if this is 50, this is 40. Then it is not totally internally reflected. Therefore, it will escape as a refracted ray. Okay, so explain what is meant by a critical angle. So this best basic definition question. When a small lamp is... 2 meters below the pool in a large swimming pool the critical angle is such so when viewed from above the swimming pool light passes only from a circular area explain why this happens and calculate the radius so within the circular area angle of incidence is less than 49 so refraction occurs and bends away so you can still see it from the outside however once it reaches the critical angle at 49 you are not able to see anymore because the light bends on the boundary of water and air so it's not seen by the person therefore it's only you can only see in this circular area so calculate the e radius so draw a simple 2d diagram like that then the radius will be as such use tangent and you get your answer like that it's a pretty fun question to do and that is all for today hope you enjoyed this video Do give it a like and subscribe and share it with somebody who needs to see this and i will catch you in the next video bye